God, couldn't someone smooth out the texture on that fucking gear? Come on. I must admit, I do like that. It, it looks ridiculous and yeah, there's some other issues with that to a degree, some wear issues, but I do, I do like where these people are going with it. It's so convoluted is this thing. So you've got these gears that are, oh, you can't, I feel like it's a CAD model and I can move it. You've got, it's this weird hub thing where there's a tooth at the top. So there's one closest to us and one furthest away from us. And yeah, but there's also these pins. So you see these guideways here and weirdly enough, the curve over the top of the shape is well good. These pins have got bearings in, look, watch. This pin goes like that and it goes over the top of that one and then in that one. This shaft's moving laterally. Fair enough, airy muff. I wanna see where the crank goes. Looks eccentric as well already. Oh no, it's just the angle. Right, we're, we're adding an awful lot of shit here. Right, all of these. You've got one of these each side and then this linear bearing race. Oh yeah, yeah. And initially I thought this was a, a four stroke. Hang about, hang about, go back. I'm getting lost here. Fuck off, Jason. I'm getting lost here. So there's teeth on there. But this is still sliding backwards and forwards. And I'm lost now. Why is this not... Oh, I see. Right, I see. I see. It's all right, I'm going mental. I was just making sure. It's because, yeah, it's because that piston's got like a, a weird L shape. It, well, half a swastika. <laughs> a chain in the middle of the cams. Fucking L Kawasaki. Look at it. Awesome. They were just heads. I'm sure they didn't have any threads on them. Right, so you've got this gear. Another thing. Oh, no. Not a roller bearing. Disaster. Yeah, some. Don't chrome your exhaust, for God's sake. Oh, look, thread them in. Ooh. Look at these. This, these guys must be fans of Kawasaki's. It's got external hard lines. Direct injectors, I'm imagining. With extraordinary fuel efficiency, fewer and cleaner emissions, impressive power to weight ratios, and full range torque. This fucking how long have you been humble? Simple engine design will revolutionize energy and transportation. Oh, they always do, right? They always do. It's a revolution. But let's have a look. Let's compare the CV design to the standard crankshaft. One advantage of the CV engine is the number of power strokes per shaft rotation. Right, so it's a two stroke then basically. So you are power stroking down, back up with valves. <sighs> the problem with that is, is uh, you, you need a real, to do this, you need a real way to pump your volumes. Now, they're saying, she's going to say, because they're basically doing a two-stroke, um, it means that they can reduce the RPM by half. So for the same fuel, you'll get the same as you would out of a four-stroke. But the difference with a two-stroke is that one stroke, well, there's a stroke on each side that are dedicated to intake and exhaust. So, you know, drawing air in and, you know, bloody expelling or scavenging. 
but you know expelling everything that's in your cylinder when you start doing this you're getting into you know two stroke diesel territory where you need a flow through really you need a uniflow system where you're going through the bottom and out through the top and there's a direction to it this with all the valves at the top uh, Firing each cylinder twice as often allows us to cut engine RPM in half, thereby reducing wear on internal components, prolonging lubricant life, and requiring fewer transmission speeds. Here is the familiar crankshaft, or CS, design. Note how there is one brief moment where the lever arm is at its maximum. Yep. This is the instant of its highest potential leverage, or torque, and is indicated by the yellow highlights here and here. The red highlights... Oh, right, it's this bloody ring. This is a bit shit. Uh, it's this ring. I thought it meant there, on the bore. <laughs> and there. Fuck's sake. Highlights shown at top and bottom designate piston top dead centre, TDC, and B bottom dead yeah, centre, good. BDC. Right, and this yeah. green arrow represents the position of centre shaft rotation. Yeah. Now, imagine if you are able to increase the same leverage by 40%, and then extend How? the amount of time that the full torque is available from just a minuscule moment to 85% of the stroke. What? This is what the CV design achieves for the... <laughs> Here is the torque curve for the CV design. How? Shortly after ignition occurs and combustion pressure is at its highest, the CV reaches its maximum leverage, transferring the piston linear motion to rotary motion with over five times the power output. No, no, no. This is also no. beneficial for the use of rapid burning fuels. So no, so they're thinking basically, you've got to think of this like a rack and a pinion, right? So this is your rack. You attach your piston to a rack and you have uh, your pinion gear. So if you push the piston down, the gear is going to constantly spin. And instead of having this uh, lever arm, right, and this malarkey, you're going to get this. You're not going to get this. You're not going to get this. Why? Let's concentrate on this piston here. Natural gas, ethanol. So there's the ignition, right? So there, the ignition, just like this. And what's happening here is that the pressure's going up and the pressure's going up. So this isn't pressure, this is torque output. But the difference is here, right, is that as the piston goes down the bore, the pressure's dropping off. So your torque is dropping off. The force, so it will peak and then it'll drop off. So basically you'll get a triangle, not this fucking rubbish. No, no. Or hydrogen. There you see, look, look, let me... With this advantage... We're halfway down the... Mm, fucking that's shite, but we're halfway down the stroke, but the, the force isn't going to be the same. The torque is force. Because all of a sudden, why does it drop off? Less fuel is required to produce more. Why is this cylinder now dropped off? The other thing is, as well, is if we go back a second reaches its maximum leverage, transferring the piston linear motion to rotary motion with over five times the power output of the CS. I thought they said they're the, same the, the same speed. These are the same speed. So the other thing is as well is as this is blowing down, this is compressing. So you've got a resistance. You do on this one as well. Well, actually it depends. It depends what stroke you're on. But you get what I mean. It's not this simple. You'd have... It, yeah, it's just rubbish such as natural gas, ethanol, or hydrogen. With this advantage, less fuel is required. This would be dropping off. The torque would be dropping off, right? Because the force, it doesn't matter. This is why people, people seem to look at this like it's, like it's a model, like it's an electric motor. This just spins, and this just does the same thing repeatedly. It doesn't work like that. We've got a gas in here. This does nothing. <laughs> That we've got a gas in here pushing it and all of this converts one thing into another, right? It, 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 oh, God's sake. To produce more power. Combining Just because this moves at constant speed doesn't mean the thing in real life would. Ensure CO2 and NOS emissions will be significantly reduced. You don't know that until you test it. Let's compare the piston side load of a standard crankshaft engine. The CV design... Right, the, they're, they're doing a very clever thing here, right? What they're doing here is they're showing your side load, right? which that's not entirely right to start with but they're showing you this versus this but this could be five newtons yes this is zero but this could be fuck all 
it, it's just replacing one graph with the other. So if you're impressed by the first one, you'll be impressed by the second one. The CV design inherently has no piston to cylinder wall contact. This eliminates piston wear, cylinder wall scoring, internal contamination, and related premature component failure. Eh. While also providing increased thermal Components hardly fail the these days. Of friction related heat. Yeah. Now, let's look at combustion pressure data taken from a running diesel engine. As the Now, are we comparing this to what? This? Let's do that again. I want to see that. Now, let's look at combustion pressure data taken from a running diesel engine. As the ignition... No, 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 no. No, you see, this, <laughs> this is compression, and then when it ignites, it spikes like a twat. Otherwise, you, <laughs> you're putting in what you're getting out. This is a spring, pretty much. I know these aren't identical, but this is basically a spring. You look at Talk comparison of CV and designs based on a two-stroke, that's his two-inch, two-inch stroke diesel cycle at one point, uh, 1,200 RPM estimated results. No, nah, this is, you, you, you fucking, even though you, your numbers, this graph is wrong. And pressure is at its highest, the CV engine will be able to... I think this one's this one. Here we go. You ready? We're coming up, we're compressing. Transfer that energy. Boom. This and this, this and this. It's not what happens. Into rotational torque, just after piston TDC. The crankshaft design reaches full torque nearly halfway through the stroke, where pressure is considerably diminished. This advantage allows the CV engine to capture higher combustion pressures, and because of this... But even from your own results here, you've got CV's 4.2 foot-pounds. No! No, you, how have you just upped your... What, because you're going slower? It... Ugh, oh, this is all... Here we have the CJ2 prototype. Yeah, this is all... Four-cylinder CJ2... Nonsense, basically. It means you have a hollow shaft. Right, let's get this bit. Right, 50%. Half the physical size and weight. I don't know where you get that from. I didn't say anything that looks like it's half. With the same or greater power. Well, that's a bit of a different thing to say. And uses less than half the fuel. You would have a perpetual motion machine. Creates nearly 60% more torque, utilising the conventional fuel, and produces far fewer emissions. You need the tests. Fully scalable from large to small, the simpler module design is easier to manufacture. Right, let's just go back a minute. That is not easier to manufacture. It's just not. That is not easy to manufacture at all. You gotta be fucking stoned. The piston bit's easy. Yeah, but any road, one thing I'll give them, I went to their website, right, and they've got more of this stuff, comparative study. Of the CD oh, it's the same model. fucking video. Um, but this is a, look, are you ready? Alfred, are you watching? This is a Hollywood prop. Kill it! <laughs> well, at least it runs, and that is the whole point of doing a miniature prototype. It's not a Hollywood prop. At least you can show that the thing runs at all. Hope that makes sense. And I'll see you in a bit.